Hi everyone, it's Professor Primitin. In this video, we're going to talk about applications of antiderivatives. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about how to find the family of antiderivatives for a given function using indefinite integral formulas. Now we're going to talk about how to solve application problems that require finding the antiderivative for a function that arises from business, economics, social sciences, or physical sciences. So let's pick up where we left off from the previous video. We want to talk about applications of antiderivatives. Antiderivatives will play several roles in mathematics and its applications. Methods and techniques for finding them are a major part of calculus, as well as within business, economic, social sciences, and physical sciences, as we're going to see in this next example. So example five is what's called an initial condition problem. Find the equation of the curve that passes through two comma five if the slope of the tangent line to the curve is given by the differential equation at a point x. So dy dx, that's representing a derivative, the derivative is 2x. So what this problem is saying is find the function's formula so that the derivative is 2x and the function will pass through 2 comma 5 on its graph. So capital Fx is the indefinite integral of 2x dx. So we want to find out the antiderivative of 2x. 2 is the coefficient, so you would keep it. x is a power function and x is raised to the first power, so you would add 1 to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So it would be 2 times 1 half times x squared plus c for the family of antiderivatives. And so if you simplify, 2 times a half is 1. So 1 times x squared is, or just x squared plus c. And so this is the family of functions where the derivative is 2x. But now we want to make sure that the function also passes through the point 2 comma 5. So we have additional information so that we can find out what is the value of c. So if you replace the x with a 2 and the y value or f of x with a 5, that gives you information you can find out the value of c. So f of x equals x squared plus c becomes 5 equals 2 squared plus c, and so 2 squared is 4, so you have 5 equals 4 plus c, and if you solve for c, the constant of integration really needs to be 1. And so that means the only function that has a derivative, 2x, and also passes through 2 comma 5 is the function, lowercase f of x, x squared plus 1. So the previous example was talking about an initial condition problem to a differential equation that comes up in mathematics. Now let's talk about physical sciences. Example 6. Position, velocity, and acceleration of an object. Suppose that the acceleration of a particle follows a quadratic function with respect to time in seconds, given as a of t equals 8 plus 18 times t, subtract 3t squared. So this is the acceleration of the particle in motion. If the initial position of the particle is 4 meters, and the initial velocity of the particle is 2 meters per second, find the velocity and the position of the particle after 10 seconds. So anytime that you're given information about initial position or initial velocity, no time has passed. So that means t equals zero. So we have information about the position of the object when it started, and we have information about how fast it was going when it started. And we're also given the acceleration of the particle at any time t, given by that formula. Since the derivative of velocity function is the acceleration function, the antiderivative of the acceleration that we're given would be the velocity function. So let's find out the velocity function by finding the family of antiderivatives. V of t for the velocity function is the indefinite integral of 8 plus 18 times t minus 3t squared dt. So we're taking the family of antiderivatives for the acceleration function to get velocity. So we know from the previous couple of videos that we can take the antiderivative of each term separately. So the integral of 8 dt, the integral of 18t dt, and then the integral of 3t squared dt. And so now I'll find the integer of each term. So you have the integer of 8, that would be 8 times t, because the variable integration is t, plus the integer of 18 times t would be 18 is the coefficient, so you keep it. t is a power function, so you add 1 to the exponent and also divide by the new exponent. So you have 18 times 1 half t squared, and then the integer of the last term would be 3 is a coefficient, so you keep it t squared is a power function, so you add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent to get the family of antiderivatives. So you have 3 times 1 third t cubed. And don't forget about the plus c at the end. We want to find the family of antiderivatives for this acceleration function. So the velocity function would be 8 times t plus 18 times a half, so 18 divided by 2, t squared. Subtract 3 times 1 third, or 3 divided by 3, t cubed, plus c. And if you simplify completely, you'll have the velocity function is 8 times t plus 9t squared, subtract t cubed plus c. So just like we had in the previous example, we have a plus c at the end for the family of antiderivatives, but we have information that we can use to find out the value of c. If the initial velocity is 2 meters per second, then the initial velocity, v of 0, is 2. 
So you can use this information to find out C. So V of zero is eight times zero, after you replace the T with zero, plus nine times zero squared, subtract zero cubed, plus C, all of this should be equal to two as the initial velocity of the particle. And so if you simplify, you'll find out that C is equal to two. And so we found out the entire velocity function, not just the family of antiderivatives for the acceleration, but the one particular velocity function. The V of T would be eight T plus nine T squared, subtract T cubed plus two. So now going back to the original problem, they were asking what is the velocity of the particle after 10 seconds? Now we have a way to actually find that value because we know the value of C. The velocity after 10 seconds would be plug 10 back into the velocity function for T. So you have V of 10 would be eight times 10 plus nine times 10 squared, subtract 10 cubed plus two, which was the constant of integration. And so if you calculate this, you'll get V of 10 is equal to negative 18 and the units for velocity is in meters per second. So this would be negative 18 meters per second would be the speed after 10 seconds of the particle. Now we're not finished with this problem because they were also asking us what is the position of the particle after 10 seconds? Well, notice that the derivative of the position function is the velocity function. So the antiderivative of the velocity function would be the position function. And so S of t is equal to the integral of 8t plus 9t squared subtract t to the third power plus two dt. You want to find out what is the antiderivative for the velocity function. So find the antiderivative of each term separately. So break this up into integral of four different terms. So integral of 8t dt, integral of 9t squared dt, integral of t cubed dt, and integral of 2 dt. And keep the signs between each of the terms. Now find the family of antiderivatives for each term separately. 8 is a coefficient for the first integral, so you would keep it. t is a power function, so you have 8 times a half times t squared for the first antiderivative. 9t squared, 9 is a coefficient, so you keep it. The t squared is a power function, so add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So you have 9 times 1 third t cubed for the antiderivative. Then you have t cubed is a power function, so add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So you have minus 1 fourth t to the fourth for the third integral. And then the antiderivative of 2 is just 2t. And then plus c, because we don't want to forget about the constant of integration. And now if you simplify, 8 times a half is 4, so 4t four squared. 9 times a third is 3, so 3t three cubed, minus 1 fourth t to the fourth, plus 2t plus c. And so again, just like we did with the velocity function, we were given the initial position of the particle. The initial position of the particle was 4 meters. So that means if you replace all the t's with a 0, the position of the particle is 4 meters. So the initial condition can be used to find out the value of c. We want to find out what is that particular function that has an initial position that is 4 meters and also has this antiderivative. So if you take all the t's and replace them with a 0, you'll have s of 0 is 4 times 0 squared plus 3 times 0 cubed minus 1 fourth times 0 to the fourth plus 2 times 0 plus c. And this is all equal to 4 because the initial position was 4 meters. And so the first four terms are all 0, and so you find out that c is equal to 4. And so now we have the particular position function for this problem. The position function would be s of t, 4t squared, plus 3t cubed, minus 1 fourth t to the fourth, plus 2t, and then plus c was 4, so plus 4. And so now if we want to find out the position of the particle after 10 seconds, replace all the t's with a 10, and so the position of the particle would be 924 meters. So that was an example from physical sciences. Now let's talk about an application from business. Example 7, cost analysis in business. The marginal cost function is given as mc of x, or we know that's c prime of x, is 3.6x squared, subtract 20x plus 25, and x is between 0 and 6. So 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 6, where c of x is the cost function in dollars, and x represents the number of items produced in thousands. The cost of producing 2,000 items is $25,500. Determine the cost function, capital C of x, and then find the cost of manufacturing 6,000 items. So this is going to work just like the last couple examples. We want to find out what is the original function, capital C of x, what's the cost function, when we're given the marginal cost function, its derivative. And we also have information in the problem that can help us find out the constant of integration, because we were told the cost of producing 2,000 items is $25,500. So we can find out the value of C, and then once we have the value of C, we can answer the question they're asking at the end. What's the cost of manufacturing 6,000 items? So the best way to actually solve this problem is to do it in steps. So the first step, since the derivative is c prime of x is 3.6x squared to track 20x plus 25, and we want to find out what is the cost function, capital C of x, we want to find out what is the antiderivative for the function. So capital C of x would be 
the indefinite integral of the marginal cost function. 3.6x squared subtract 20x plus 25 dx. Since there are three terms, you can find the antiderivative of each term separately. So integral of 3.6x squared dx. Subtract integral of 20x dx plus integral of 25 dx. So now let's find out what is this first integral. The integral of 3.6x squared. 3.6 is a coefficient, so you keep it x squared is a power function, so add 1 to the exponent to find its antiderivative, and then also divide by the new exponent. So you have 3.6 times 1 third x to the third power. Subtract 20 is the coefficient, so you keep it. x is the power function, so the antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2. So you have 20 times a half x squared. And the antiderivative of 25 is 25 times x, plus c for the family of antiderivatives. And so if you simplify, 3.6 times 1 third is 1.2, so 1.2 x cubed. Subtract 20 times a half, that's 10, so subtract 10x squared, plus 25x, plus c. So we know that the cost function will be of this form. The cost function is c of x, 1.2x cubed, minus 10x squared, plus 25x, plus c. But now we want to find out what is that particular value of c for this problem. The capital C can be found by using the information given in the problem. We were told the cost of producing 2,000 items is $25,500. So keep in mind that the x is given in thousands of units. So if 2,000 units are being produced, that's really x equals 2. So if you plug 2 into the cost function, you'll get $25,500. Let's use this information to find out c. So if you plug 2 into this family of antiderivatives, the value should be just $25,500. So 1.2 times 2 cubed after you replace the x with a 2, minus 10 times 2 squared, plus 25 times 2, plus c. This must be 25,500. So after you simplify the first three terms, you'll get 19.6 plus c for the last term is equal to 25,500. So after you solve this equation for c, you'll find out that the constant of integration is 25,480.4. And so that means the particular cost function for this problem would be capital C of x is 1.2x cubed subtract 10x squared plus 25 times x plus, and we just found out c was 25,480.4. And so since we have the particular cost function that models this problem, now we can go back and answer the original problem. What was the cost of manufacturing 6,000 items? So if 6,000 items are being manufactured, that means x equals 6 because x was in thousands of units. So c of 6 would be 1.2 times 6 cubed minus 10 times 6 squared plus 25 times 6 plus 25,480.4. And you'll come up with a cost of $25,529.60. So let's try one more problem that's very similar. Example eight, marginal average cost function. Suppose that the average marginal cost function is AC prime of X is negative 6 million divided by X to the fifth, where AC of X is the average cost function in dollars, and X represents the number of items produced by the business. The average cost of producing 20 items is $300. What is the average cost function and what is the cost function? So again, this is gonna work just like the last example. Since we're given the derivative of the average cost function, and we want to find out what is the average cost function, we want to find the family of antidotes. And since we have that the average cost of producing 20 items is $300, we can find out the constant of integration. So AC of X, the average cost function, would be the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of negative 6 million divided by X to the fifth dx. Let's bring X to the fifth up to the numerator so it becomes a power function. So negative 6 million X to negative 5 dx. So now we can find the family of antiderivatives. Negative 6 million is a coefficient, so you would keep it. And now x to negative 5, that's a power function. So to find the antiderivative would be add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So if you add 1 to the exponent, you'll get negative 4. So x to negative 4 power and divide by negative 4. So you have negative 6 million times negative 1 fourth x to negative 4 power and then plus c for the family of antiderivatives. And so the average cost function would be, after you simplify, negative 6 million divided by negative 4 becomes 1,500,000 x to negative 4 plus c. And so if you move x to negative 4 back down to the denominator, it becomes 1,500,000 divided by x to the fourth plus c. So we know the average cost function will be of this form. However, we also know that we can find out the value of c by using information given in the problem. We were told the average cost of producing 20 items is $300. So that means if you replace all the x's in the average cost function with 20, you should get 300 as the output. So the information can be used to find out the value of the constant of integration. So AC of 20 would be 1,500,000 divided by X that's being replaced with a 20, so 20 to the fourth power plus C. This is equal to, after you simplify, you'll get 9.375 plus C on the left-hand side, and AC of 20, that's equal to 300. 
So 9.375 plus C equals 300. That gives you a way to solve for C. So subtract 9.375. And so C is equal to 290.625. That's the constant of integration for this particular problem. And so now we have the particular average cost function. It's A C of X, 1,500,000 divided by X to the fourth plus 290.625. So that's the average cost function. We're also asked in the problem to find what is the cost function, c of x. So since the average cost function is defined this way, a c of x is c of x divided by x, we can find out the average cost function by multiplying both sides of this equation by x. So the cost function would be on the right-hand side. After you multiply the, the right side by x, the x's will cancel out. So c of x is equal to a c of x times x. So that means if you take the average cost function and you multiply everything by x, then you'll get the cost function. So C of X, the cost function would be 1,500,000 divided by X to the fourth times X plus 290.625 times X. And so if you simplify, it'd be 1,500,000 divided by X cubed after one of the X's cancel out from the denominator and the other term is 290.625 times X. So that's the cost function for this problem. So this finishes our video on applications of antidrogues. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about integration by substitution.